Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I've got something interesting for you. I'm going to build one of these. What this is, is this is a knockoff battery that I purchased for my soldering iron. It's an M12 one. But I also purchased even more recently this kit to make one of these. And I'm going to also use these reclaimed cells that I have salvaged from this old burner Husqvarna battery. So like the thumbnail suggests, I'm going to make you a battery on your screen for £7.50. These cells cost me nothing. This kit costs £7.50 on eBay. It's got the circuit board and the three components that make up the casing of the battery. It's also got a few other little knickknacks, most of which I will use. There's these little uh, nickel tabs. I may or may not use them. I may use my own strips. Um, there's little stickers. That'll be nice for finishing off. It says 3 ampere, but the battery I'm going to make today will be, hopefully, a high quality 2 ampere because I'm using 2000 milliamp LG cells. It's not cost effective to do this because you can buy these little weightly ones for about 12 or 15 pounds. But I'm doing this for fun and educational purposes. I'm not saying you should do this. Battery repair is the choice of a madman. If you're mad, go ahead. But I do not suggest that you should do it. Step one is the cells. We'll test the cells and you'll see they're of equal or very near equal value. They're all sitting about 3.61 or 3.62, which is not too far away from equal. So cell equilibrium is very, very important when you're doing a battery build. It's the life of your battery to discharge and recharge, so they have to do that equally. So we'll have to connect these cells together in the proper configuration and then we'll attach the circuit board. I suggest maybe using the battery box itself to show you where they should be. And if you look, that's the plus and that's the minus. And there's the two cell balancers there, I'll just bring that up close. The 4 volt and then the 8 volt. So, so there we are now, we've got them joined together. The one thing wasn't supplied in this kit was wire. Right, I've got this far of all the wires coming out, so I have to connect them in the correct configuration. So let's proceed. That's it now, it's all fully connected. Hopefully, I can fill it all in the battery box now, and everything hopefully will be golden. That's it put together now, so I'm going to have to put the base on. So I think it goes that way. There you are. Now there's little stickers. Like it says 3 ampere, but this is not a 3 ampere battery. This is made by 2000 milliamp cells, so it's a 2 ampere battery. And it also says made in China. This is not made in China, this is made in Tyrone. When you get these batteries, any lies can be read on them. I don't think I'm going to bother sticking that on. So I'll have to test it now. Right, we're showing at 10.85 volts, so that means this needs a bit of a charge, so that's probably okay. So I'll stick it in the charge now. So here goes nothing. Right, 
No, didn't work. <laughs> right, I've discovered what has happened. It's this board that I got from the Asian continent. It says 8 volt here and 4 volt here and I wired them accordingly. But I've looked up here, it says 8 volt here. It shouldn't be 8 volt there. It should be 4 volt and that should be 8 volt. So what i got to do to fix it is to change around those two wires. And I should have a battery that will be functional. That's disappointing, but at least I know what's wrong. Be careful. Don't don't ever do this. This is a crazy thing to do. Don't ever make your own battery. It's only for madmen like me. Right, I got the wires changed around and I got her closed up again. In the words of Supergroup from France, Daft Punk, one more time. Let's try her. It's charging. So I'll leave it 10 minutes, see if it takes a full charge. I think we may have a success this time. That battery's taking a full charge, so I'll get it on the multimeter and see what it's got. Right here we are now. 12.2 volts. So that's taking a full charge. And I'll show you how you can check the voltage of the individual cells. You go from here to here, it'll give you 4.8. You go from here to here, here to here, that gives you the second cell voltage, which is nearly the same. And here to here, which is nearly the same. So we have a well balanced, even if I do say so myself, well made pack. The actual circuit board was a bit of a disappointment that it actually was labelled wrong. But that's what happens if you use generic parts. But the cells are pretty legit. So was that worth doing? Hell no. Don't do this. You'd be better off buying a knockoff Wheatley than paying seven fifty for the kit and using old cells. That is just too much of a job. Nobody in the right mind would do this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like.